today's a big day for you and for me. I'm gonna teach you how to make a side hustle work. If you've got one, great, scale it. Let's do it together today. If you haven't got one, time now to think about it. Side hustles can transform your life. Personally, I'm only successful today because I had many side hustles and one of them worked. And today, I'm gonna to introduce you to a side hustle that was zero, no money, no network, and turned into a billion dollar company. And I'm gonna meet the founder today who did it. One of the most successful and exciting entrepreneurs in the UK today. So come on, I'm gonna have my Weedabix and then let's go. Not sponsored by Weedabix. Morning, Talia. Morning. High five, let's do this. All right. Have you guessed where we're going yet? I'm excited to introduce this billion dollar company founder to you. And we're almost there. Just before we get there and I reveal who it is, I just want to tell you a few things that I've learned about building side hustles myself. My first ever side hustle was a company called Accommodation Express. I had to take a job in a hotel while one of my other businesses was failing. I needed some income. And while I took this job, which didn't feel natural to me to take a job, I came up with this idea called Accommodation Express. Now, for all you young people out there listening today, you might not have ever heard of the fact that there was once no internet. So I built this company, this concept, where hotels who often get full up, when they fill up, people used to ring and say, hey, have you got a room? And they'd say, sorry, we're full. And so I thought that was a waste of marketing. The hotel had spent a lot of money getting that phone call and receptionists generally were just putting the phone down on those leads and that was that. So I came up with a company called Accommodation Express where instead of putting the phone down on those people that were inquiring if your hotel was full, they give the lead to us. And then we would find them an equivalent hotel to stay in. And then the hotel that referred the lead to us would get commission and uh, the hotel that we placed a booking with would also give us commission. So everybody would win, the hotel wouldn't lose that booking and, that, and a hotel that wasn't empty would get the booking. And this turned into quite an interesting, lucrative business for a short period of time for me. And it taught me so many things about arbitrage, about how the mechanism of partnerships work, the fact that hotels even pay commission, which is still true today. A lot of this was actually really the foundation for what our big businesses today, like lastminute.com or hotels.com. And so I feel like my side hustle Without that side hustle, which did eventually not work as a business, I wouldn't be successful today. So a side hustle isn't just about building a business right now that makes you a lot of money. It is about learning how things work. And you know, I can tell you, doing a side hustle, if you were thinking of going to university or paying to go on a business school uh, course, don't bother, invest that business, business money, that business opportunity in a side hustle. The final thing I'll say before we go and meet our, uh, our exciting um, guest for today's uh, video blog is money is not a real thing. And I'll explain a little bit more about that at the end of the video, but money is the first virtual reality we've ever truly believed in. And this will help you, if I explain this a bit later, understand why a side hustle is so easy if you have the right mindset. Anyway, let's get back on the road and let's uh, go meet this incredible entrepreneur. figured out who we're meeting yet? We're sitting in their office having free breakfast. I'm wandering around the one-way system downstairs. I, know where to go. I walk into <laughs> a sorry. meeting, I walk into someone's meeting, I'm like, I'm sorry to <laughs> It's okay, we're all very relaxed here, so. Oh, yeah. Shall I take you through? Simon. Hello. Hey. Hello. Hello. How Simon. Are yes. Hi, I'm Ben. Lovely to meet you. Meet you, Ben. All right, yeah. We've uh, just had Hi. some lovely breakfast Hi. and stuff. Hi. I'm Talia. Talia. Lovely yeah, to meet you. Nice. Introduce what we're doing and yeah. what uh, the TikTok campaign's about so you're fully aware. Yeah. And then I thought I would uh, 
do a little interview for 10 minutes. I yeah. want to ask you about side hustle. And, yeah. and I know you did a few before Gymshark and uh -huh. just share that knowledge of side hustle mindset with yeah. a few people. Um, sit down, by the way. I'm asking you to sit down in your own office. I wanted to talk a little bit um, about side hustles. Yes. And, and a lot of people um, on, on our channel are always asking, and on TikTok are always asking about, how do I start a side hustle? Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes they talk about how they need money and they need this. I thought there would be no better person on the planet to mm -hmm. talk about your early side hustles. Yes. And I know Gymshark was a side hustle. Mm -hmm. It's turned into this incredible business. Absolutely. But maybe talk about some of your other side hustles and the, and the mindset at the time back then. So the first, so I mean, as a young, young kid, I would just, my, my granddad had a, a business where we would line furnaces. So I would sort of mess around and help him a little bit here and there. The first thing that I really went out and did I guess on my own, I say on my own, I worked closely with um, two of my close friends, a guy called Colin and Elliot. Um, I built a website that would sell number plates or registrations for cars and vehicles online. That was the first thing that I ever did. Um, after that, fitness apps, I taught, taught myself to make iPhone apps. I made four iPhone apps, I think a handful of websites. So yeah, Gymshark was also a side hustle. It was this sixth or seventh website that I'd made, I think. So um, I just sort of pursued what I really enjoyed. So fitness was the thing for me. So I made a fitness social network, a fitness forum, uh, a fitness app, obviously Gymshark. So I just used side hustles to pursue what I loved. And these early side hustles that you mm. built, I mean, people listening, you know, they dream of doing it. So did you, was it just a question of you went on a course to learn programming and then mm. sat down and made something? Or was it some inspiration? How did it come about? So... So the thing for me, the, the big driving factor was just a desire to be involved in fitness. Now, on the side, I did um, IT. I did a BTEC in IT in sixth form. So I think you do sixth form at 16, 17 years old, I think it is. Um, so I had a basic understanding of how to build things from, from that. Now, outside of that, I just went on YouTube. And I think, you know, YouTube's such an incredible resource. And I spent a lot of time learning how to build things through social. Um and then basically just sat there and plugged away and, you know, tried and failed, tried and failed until I'd actually built a complete app, um, put it out on the app store. And I mean, listen, it didn't set the world alight. It wasn't incredible. But for me, it was just that feeling of building something and completing it that was really important. I think this is a really important point as well. You're mentioning there. People think things take off from day one mm. and that's how you know it's the right thing. Right. So it's persistence, isn't it? You're talking about persistence. There. I mean, the best example of that would be, you know, Gymshark. It's it was the UK's fastest growing business um, and it took months to get our first sale. But, you know, if after two weeks I'd have just sort of cancelled it and forgotten about it, then we wouldn't be where we are today. So. Yeah, things don't always happen overnight. And there's that there's that quote, isn't there, you hear everywhere, like an overnight success actually takes years, which is it is completely true. Mm. It takes years and years of, of effort. It takes many, many failures. Um, and I think it's a good job that you're talking about this because, one, it's not talked about enough. And it's because, you know, to hit the headlines, it's not five websites failed. It's the one that did incredibly well. Um and the more people that I speak to that are great leaders, great business people, great entrepreneurs, have so many failures beforehand. And the thing that I really admire about them is their ability to remain optimistic throughout all of those failures. And I, I think it's great that you're talking about it because it's not spoken about enough. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I, I always uh, say that failure is the reason I'm successful. I mean, mm -hmm. and, and, and I think that's so key, but people do want instant successes. But four months, I can't believe it because the product, I'm, I've, I've just bought some Gymshark mm -hmm. stuff myself. Thank you. And it's, it's awesome. Thank uh, you. So why was it four months? Was it was it just trying to um, on the social side? Yeah, it was. So, so, so Gymshark specifically, I just wanted to be involved in fitness. And as an aside, because I'd made a social network of forum apps, I wanted to make a website that would transact. So I put supplements on the website and it was a case of, for me, the finished product was a website that would transact supplements. Now we drop ship those supplements because we couldn't afford to buy the stock in. Um, and I think we just, you know, it wasn't better than what else was out there. So I think that's why it took a bit of time. We couldn't get people to the website. We started to use Facebook and social medias to try and drive traffic to the website. Um, I think the reason we didn't get sales is just because people weren't accessing the website, essentially. Was there a moment where you did think this isn't working? Oh, God. Yes, many. Um, so obviously in the very beginning. Now, I just want to also start by saying there was there's, at the start, there was times where I thought this isn't working, but that wasn't like a concern. It was a case of, oh, this also isn't working, just like all the things previously. But I had I'd sort of set my 
my I guess my bar relatively low. So I I go back to my initial reason for sort of getting involved in the apps and the um, the websites was I want to be involved in fitness. So even a bad app or a bad website gets me involved in fitness. So once I'd done that, I was like, okay, brilliant. I'm involved in fitness. This is this is amazing, right? Now I want a website that's going to transact. Finish the website that was going to transact. And, you know, my bar was just raised very slightly. And then once the website transacted, it was a case of let's get a sale, manage to get a sale. And then it was let's get consistent sales. And then all of a sudden I was like, oh, wow, no one's making the clothes that we want to wear. So work hard at Pizza Hut, save money to uh, um, buy a screen printer and a sewing machine, learn how to make clothing. I always set the bar very, very low. Um, but, you know, it was sort of incremental improvement and it was progressing what we were doing. I actually think that's, you don't hear that enough either, set the bar low. I mean, mm-hmm. you always hear like aim for the sky and, you know, mm-hmm. think big and all these great Instagram quotes. But mm-hmm. actually setting the bar low is pretty interesting it, as well, a model. Well, it is. And it's like, so people, are, people ask me today, it's a case of, did you think or did you ever set out to create a global brand? Like, no, 18-year-old Ben didn't sit there and go, I want to create a global brand. Ben said, I want to be involved in fitness. I want a website that will transact. I want to learn how to make a tank. I want to sell a tank. I want to sell a, a product. I want to regularly sell a product. I want to do an event. And then all of these things slowly over years and years and years add up to everything that you see today. Mm. I hope you enjoyed that interview with Ben. I know I did. We have a full interview coming up, links below. Enjoy folks, so much to learn from Ben. So basically, do a side hustle and be like Ben. Do it because you love it. And I'll just say to you that in the end, money is not real. Remember this, money should not stop you doing your dream business. It didn't stop Ben, it didn't stop me, it shouldn't stop you. Money is the first virtual reality we have bought into believing is real, it's not. You can start a business today with no money. Try it, see if I'm right. If you found this video blog inspiring, please hit the subscribe button. Feel free to share it with anyone that needs to hear more about how to enhance their side hustle and can learn from Ben or myself today. And finally, if you have any questions about entrepreneurship and how it works, feel free to drop it in the comments. And don't forget, Anytime you need help, reach out to us on thepurposefulproject.com.